What's on? What's uh, going on, everyone? We'll give everyone a second to get in here. I'm actually just laying in my bed. Um, I'm gonna talk some baseball. Answer your questions. I actually uh, I fell asleep at like <laughs> eight thirty, I think, and uh, told Laura to wake me up uh, right before nine thirty to do this. So. I'm getting up. I've had a long five, six months of baseball. So, hello, Henry. What's up, Carson? Hi, Roger. What's going on? Uh, you do have to try out to get on our team. Yep. Hey, Ben. What's up, Chet? Nicholas, what's going on? So I'm actually just putting on a TV right now. So I don't have any games on. Uh, last thing I had on, on, oh uh, yeah, my son started school today too. I actually was, uh, last thing that was on TV was my son was laying in here watching uh, Fortnite videos and I fell asleep and then I woke up and he was in bed. <laughs> What happened that I'm not playing anymore? Uh, I'm old, slow, and can't hit. Bryce Harper has a better swing than Ken Griffey Jr. Bryce Harper's got a great swing. Uh, Ken Griffey Jr. had a great swing too, though. So I don't know if I'd say he has a better swing than Griffey. I'd say Griffey's got one of the best swings of all time. Uh, I said earlier that I ate a meal every three hours. What do those meals look like? Jack can't tell anyone the home run dairy. Funny, Henry. Um, so my meals, when I was playing and ate every three hours, I miss you too, G. Um, my meals were typically, I eat a lot of chicken, a lot of steak. Um, back then I ate a lot of just regular potatoes. Now I eat a lot of sweet potatoes. So to give you an idea, I'd wake up, you know, have uh, oatmeal for breakfast maybe with like a smoothie. Usually work out, have a protein shake after that. For lunch, I'd have, you know, uh, I eat the same thing every day. Some combination of either a chicken, a steak or something, a potato and a vegetable. Not as much vegetables when I was younger. Laura meat makes me eat a lot of vegetables now. Uh, I'm not, I don't not have health care benefits since I played in the MLB. No, I had them while I was in the MLB, but it is not true that you have health care for life if you play in the major leagues for one day. Everyone thinks that. Worst minor league park I played in? I did not enjoy Lancaster very much, although um, the... It was a great place to hit, not a great place to play. Um, let's see. My son made the best travel team in Illinois, and it's really great. They get keys to training facility and can use it anytime they want. So awesome. So no more gym membership. Yeah, that is great. Congrats to him also. Um, what are some good drills for bat drag? Um, so it really depends on why you're, why the bat is dragging. So it's hard to say just drills for bat drag. Um, but I would watch our videos on bat drag. If you go on to, um, our hitting playlist, I have a bunch of videos on bat drag. How do I feel about the Orioles being over 500 this year? Well, um, it's about time. So I guess I don't really, I mean, I'm not an Orioles fan, so I don't really feel like excited for them, but good for them. O'Neill Cruz. Uh, 
Yeah, like he's got a ton of talent. So it's fun watching him play. I mean, he can swing the hell out of it. He, he can throw <laughs> He can throw the thing like uh, no one I've ever seen him before. So he's got a little ton of talent. And hopefully a really bright future. How you do, uh, howdy, Cameron. College camps are good. We've had a couple guys get offers from college camps. College camps are a good way for colleges to really get like a, a you know, if they've seen you play, even if they haven't seen you play, but a lot of times they'll see you play and then they want you to come to camp because they're able to put you through their own drills or able to really, you know, to meet you, to get to know you more as a person. You're able to see the campus. You're able to, to get to know the coaching staff more, see if it's the staff that you'd want to play for. So I think they're good. I'm completely new to baseball. A sophomore in high school, I want to play this season. What is the best advice to get good? And, um, I mean, there's no special advice. you got to put in a lot of work and probably a lot more than the average player because you haven't played before. So, um, you know, but I don't have any special advice. You're just going to have to outwork, you know, everybody. And it won't be easy. But, yeah, I've seen players pick up baseball late. So you can definitely do it. Um, is Major League Baseball, the hardest league for bad teams to improve? Well, your draft picks do take a long time to get to the big leagues. And, I mean, it's hard to draft. You know, people will say the draft's a crapshoot. They'll say that in a lot of sports. But really, it's like, you know. And basketball, if, you know, if you're taking the number one pick, or at least the top couple picks, should usually have a pretty good chance of making it and doing well in the league. Same thing with football. Baseball isn't always like that. Um, so I don't know if it's the hardest to improve. But you know, one thing about baseball is there there is no salary cap. So technically, you could spend a bunch of money. Um, there is a luxury tax, obviously, but... Hey, Evan, thank you so much for Super Chat. What's it like playing for franchises whose owners don't care about winning versus those who do? Well, um, I wasn't in the big leagues enough with enough te teams. <laughs> Jack gave you pizza at camp. That's good, Henry. So um, I don't really, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't have firsthand experience. Um, I will say all the teams that I played for, you know, I was only in the major leagues with the Padres, but I was in big league spring training with the Padres. I was there with the Nationals. I was with the um, Indians for a little bit. I was with uh, every team I was with. I guess I was in big league spring training um, at some point. And, you know, I don't know if anyone... I would say the Nationals, at least in spring training, was like... Um, I don't know the best word that I'm, well, I don't know the word I'm trying to use, not the, the cheapest team, but uh, maybe that is the word I'm looking for at the time. It's that's, it felt a little bit like that. Um, but the, you know, I don't know. I, I can't really answer the, it's a good question. I mean, it felt like all the teams I played for were trying to win. I mean, the Padres, we didn't finish well. Um, but it didn't feel like we weren't trying to win. Yeah, I never played for the Pirates. Hey, Joe Schmo. Thank you so much for the super chat, Joe Schmo. Uh, Mr. Matt, you talk about turning the bat up into the ball. My question is, should, what should my bat angle be at contact, more vertical or horizontal? So um, it's going to depend. Like, So if this is completely horizontal, right, and then this would be completely vertical, it's going to depend a little bit on on um, the pitch location, the height of the pitch, right? The higher the pitch, the flatter, more horizontal, the lower the pitch, the more vertical. Um, but I do think that there's a lot of studies and you can you can actually look up vertical bat angle of guys and, and um, there is something to be said for having a, a more vertical bat. The more vertical your bat, Right, so I know, again, it's a little bit hard to show, but the more vertical your bat is, um, actually the less likely typically you have of fouling off the ball because if you think about it, if, you're, if you swing completely horizontal like this, right, and you miss 
let's say you miss here, so the ball's here and you miss under, you can miss hit the ball, you can foul off the ball. The more vertical your bat is, well, if the ball moves up or down, it's harder to foul a ball off back because your bat is, is still there. Um, you're also able to turn the barrel up into the ball a little bit better. The flat, more horizontal your bat is, I, on the high pitch, you know, it's not a horrible thing. But the lower the pitch, if you've still got a horizontal bat, it's going to be really difficult to hit that ball. It's difficult to turn the barrel up into the ball. It's difficult to square the ball up. So um, there is something to be said for having a little bit more of a vertical bat angle. But, um, you know, it, it does depend a little bit on pitch location. Uh, let's see. Will Jared Kelenic ever figure things out? You know, I don't watch the Mariners enough. Um, you know, I know he struggled in his time in the big leagues. I'd have to really look at his swing a little bit more. I'd, I'd have to really, like, follow him a lot closer than I do. The only time I see him is, you know, if he does do something well, I, I see it. You know, if I stumble upon a Mariners game, which I I haven't lately, so... Should I, you, uh, do you think Paul, Paul Goldschmidt will win the Triple Crown and MVP this year? He's amazing. Uh, I don't, you know, it'd be really cool if he did. I love his swing. Um, you know, super simple. Not to say that, you know, you know, sometimes player people see, you know, someone do well and they're like, everyone's got a swing like him. I just think that his swing is really short, compact, quick. He's, he's really strong. Um, you know, I saw him play in person, what, a month ago? I went to Philly's um, Cardinals game. Every every at-bat he had, the guy had a rocket. It's crazy, so. Thanks, Joe Schmo. Um, all right, we almost have 100 people in here. So if everyone, this would be great if everyone could give this video a, uh, a like. We can get almost 100 likes. What do I think about Judge? I think Judge is a, a specimen. I think he's got a really good swing. I, I think he's just a freak, you know. Um, I always tell I always tell the story of, uh, you know, when he got drafted, and I know his swing in, in college was was not as good as it is now. But um, I remember when the Yankees got him late in the first round, and I was like, how does a man this big, fast, and strong? go this late like I would have drafted him a lot higher now he, he had to make some swing changes to shorten the swing up and you know to get his barrel working a little bit better but it's hard to find players with that much natural ability Rocky Rips uh, will I be doing lessons um, so yeah, I haven't given any lessons in quite some time because, um, you know, I, I was traveling so much playing and then we had three weeks of tryouts and we had three weeks of camps and and um, we're also working to get our facility open. So I haven't given any lessons. Um, I'm going to give lessons once our facility gets opened up, which hopefully will be very soon. So uh, I'm working hard to get that done and we're moving in the right direction. So once we do get that open, I will be doing lessons again. But I've just been so busy and, you know, I'm pretty exhausted. Like, I, I just, um, I haven't really taken a day off in, like, months and months and months. I haven't taken any days off. Um, so, I'm getting pretty tired. Uh, eventually, I will take a day off. But, you know, what? We'll, uh, I will be back to lessons soon, yes. Uh, let's see how hard you have to throw across the diamond to play D1 at third baseman. Yeah, I don't know if there's any specific number. I couldn't even tell you the number. Um, you know, do you have to have a strong arm? Yes. Do you have to have an absolute cannon or bazooka? No. You know, I don't know what the exact number is, though. I'd be lying if I told you um, what it is. I have a super chat in here somewhere. Here we go. Drew. Drew Morrow. Thank you so much for the Super Chat. Hey, Matt, love your stuff. Fan from New Hampshire. Hey, what's going on? Can you talk a bit about Manny cutting off Damon? Is that the greatest thing ever on the diamond? 
Yeah, well, I mean, I'm a humongous Manny Ramirez fan. I mean, he's my favorite hitter of all time. Um, and when he cut that ball off, uh, I laughed really hard for a long time. So, yes, I would say that's one of the uh, one of the greatest things that I've seen. I've seen a lot of good things. I mean, it was also really cool against the Orioles when he caught that ball and high-fived the fan and then threw the guy out um, at first base, so... How many ground balls did I usually field daily during my MOB career? Well, I would say probably, you know, um, it's a good question. I would say you're probably going to field between 30 and, uh, well, it depends, you know, what you're considering ground balls. So if you, your typical day, you're going to get to the park. I mean, if you do early work that day, some days you're going to have early work where you, you could field 50, 60 balls just in early work, and then you're going to have batting practice where you're going to field, and then you're going to field, you know, in a game, and you're going to field from the first baseman throwing you warm-ups and stuff like that. So, you know, but, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe 50. 50 might be, like, the average. Um, I'm totally guessing on that. But every, every day, at minimum, you're going to hit your batting practice, and then a portion of your batting practice is going to be in the field with a coach hitting you fungos. And I would say you're probably going to get, you know, probably 30 or so at that point. But then you're also going to have some live off the bat that get hit that you're going to field as well. You know, and then you're going to get some in the game. And so let, let's just say 50. Now, if you're stinking, like if I'm feeling really bad about something, I might go out early and field, you know, 50 balls, 100 balls before you even have batting practice. So, uh, Henry, yeah, fall ball is going to look similar um, to last year um, with the with the uh, structure of it. We're actually going to probably have. I'm going to keep the numbers a little bit lower than last year. Last year, we let probably a few too many players do it. So we're going to keep the numbers a little bit lower. But uh, yeah, it'll be a, a very similar type uh, setup with maybe just like a few adjustments of, to uh, to make sure that we're getting in even a little bit more work. So, but yeah, overall, similar. Hey, DC, thank you so much for Super Chat. Anto, it's been ages. It has been ages, DC. Looking good, kid. I don't have a question. Just saying hi. Well, I appreciate the Super Chat and I appreciate you saying hi. What do I, what do you make of Aaron Judge's hitting coach? Do you agree with his philosophy? Um, so I don't know. Uh, people ask me this all the time, not just about Aaron Judge, but about a lot of people's hitting coaches. I've never worked with his hitting coach before, so I don't, I don't know enough to, I guess, get into if I agree with him. Um, watching Judge's swing, um, I like Judge's swing. I think he does a lot of good things. I think he's made a lot of good changes to his swing since getting to the big league. So, how much catcher's drills do you work with your catcher? So, um, we do most of our catching work uh, in the off season. Our catchers get um, typically how their practice works. They get an hour of, of catching time where we're working. We use our hack attack machines. We're working on blocking, receiving, uh, mostly. We spend most of our time receiving with receiving work. Um, then we do blocking and then we do throwing. And then catchers are also going to get a lot of work catching bullpens. And that's where a lot of, um, you know, you take the work that you do off the hack attack and all that. And then you, you try to transition that into your bullpen. You try to catch your bullpen like a game. So um, they get a lot of work in. Zach Stacy, interesting situation for me here. My MIAA Hall of Fame high school varsity coach retired this year. And yesterday, my school named a club coach I played for years ago and was cut from as the new head coach, as the new coach. Uh, that is interesting. Is that a bad situation for you? Well, I mean, if he's a Hall of Fame coach, then I'm guessing he's a pretty good coach. So, And a club coach that you got cut for or got cut from... So I wish you luck. Um, 
depends how long ago that was, but it was also a different atmosphere. Like I always tell people, I'll, I'll just give you this real quick before I move on. You know, I'm a, I'm a club coach or travel ball coach. I also coach high school. People get so concerned with like, oh, um, you know, he, this coach is going to favor his, his club players, his travel ball players, or, you know, oh, he cut me. So he's going to cut me from high school because he didn't like me. Like, like I totally separate the two and people don't believe me when I say this. I coached at um, a school called St. John's Prep for a long time, which is one of the best high school baseball, uh, high school baseball programs in our state. And uh, we had a lot of our Antonio baseball players there as well. And, um, you know, I totally separate both of them. And just because you play for us in Antonio baseball, um, for me, shouldn't give you like any advantage or disadvantage playing for the high school team. Uh, the high school team's the high school team, the club team's the club team. So not everyone does that. Not everyone thinks like that. That's the way I do it. So I would, I would just do your best and I wouldn't worry too, too much about it. Um, and I wish you luck. Uh, we had a super chat in here somewhere. Hey, Groovy Loopy. There we go. We got a super chat. Thank you so much, Groovy Loopy. Uh, bringing my son to his first showcase at a college in two weeks. Any advice for the showcase in general and how to prepare for it? Yeah, so I'll give you a really quick, um, I'll give you a really quick rundown of how they work. Um, and they're really like most showcases. I mean, you're going to probably, typically, you go through a showcase type workout where, depending on your position, I guess, if you're a position player, you're going to run a, you know, you're going to get loose, you're going to run a 60 yard dash. Uh, you're probably going to hit BP of some sort. Um, they might be taking exit speed, you know, depending on, I don't know if they have a, a rap soto or a track man or, you know, hit tracks or anything like that, but you're going to go through your normal batting practice. You're going to feel ground balls, usually in a showcase style. We're going to throw the ball across the infield or if you're an outfield, you're going to get, you know, fly balls and throw the ball home. And if you're a catcher, you're going to do some pop time stuff and then you're going to play in a game. So nothing crazy. Um, I always tell people the biggest thing when any showcase is just like play your game and don't try to showcase yourself, just play, you know, like um, don't put any extra pressure on yourself. Don't try to do more than you're capable of. You just play the game and, um, and you know, hopefully have a good day. Um, but, you know, don't get too, too concerned about, you know, sometimes players make a mistake and they get all flustered and rattled and then it leads to them playing worse. And it's like, you know, whether you strike out, you don't strike out, you know, hit a home run, you ground, whatever, you know, play the game hard, do the best you can. And, um, and, and what you are is, is, is what you are. So coach, coaches are able to see that. Even if you don't think you have a great day, a lot of times players are like, oh, I didn't have a great day. And it's like college coach really liked your actions. They liked the way, you know, that you moved, that you swung, or you field, or you threw, or, or whatever. And, uh, you know, players sometimes don't realize that, so. Uh, don't get over concerned in a good way or a bad way with how things are going. Just play your game and I wish you luck. Um, doing the most. What's up? Henry, what are you talking about? You hit the gym 80 times in the past few weeks. You could have fooled me. When your coach, I mean, I don't want to flash these things. I don't want to, I don't want to flash these things right there, but when your when your coach has double the size arms that you do, it's not a good sign. So you got to get in the gym more. Chris, thank you so much for a super chat. It's very generous of you. Always enjoy the channel. Keep strong. Free agent question. LA and New York teams draw huge crowds. St. Louis is one eighth in population, but always draws fans. Why is that? And what draws players there? Travel, fans, history, playoff possibilities. Well, I'll say, um, you know, St. Louis and people... Uh, people will say, well, a lot of players would be like, oh, Boston fans, best fans in the league, or LA fans, best fans in the league. You know, St. Louis, I think really players really feel that St. Louis has got some of the best fans in the league. Um, knowledgeable fans. Why is that? You know, I don't, I, I don't know what it is. Um, I mean, I know the team's been around for a long time, but there are a lot of teams that have been around for a long time. So I'm not sure exactly what it is. It just seems like the people in St. Louis and the fans get it. Like, they cheer when they're supposed to cheer. They actually don't seem to boo very much. Like, you'll, you'll get kind of, you know, in New York or Boston, you'll get a lot of boos. Um, they just seem like really, really good fans. 
So I wish I knew the answer for you. Um, but they're all, I mean, they have always been solid. Like, I'm trying to think of the last time the Cardinals were bad. You know, like bad, like you had no chance of making a playoffs. I don't even know. Um, I'd have to, I'd have to go back and look, but they're, they just seem like they're a really well run organization. They always have good teams. They always put a good product on the field and, well, I mean, they just got really nice people in that part of the country. I look like I'm still sleeping. I'm wide awake. I naturally, when I when I squint to read, as you can see, I get pretty big bags under my eyes. But that's just my eyes. <laughs> just the way I was made. Uh, let's see. Um, makes you look younger. <laughs> How much would you say you practiced a day in high school? Um, in high school, I mean, I practiced, uh, typically we'd have practice at, I don't know, three o'clock, three to five was probably our normal high school practice. So two hours a day. Um, you know, sometimes I would stay late and sometimes I get there early, but nothing crazy. You know, it wasn't like I was practicing six hours a day or anything. I, I was, um, I did, I did, you know, have a, uh, did strength training in high school, uh, not until my junior year, but, so I did work out during the season um, as well, but probably about two hours of, of baseball work a day, I would say on average. What age would you start having kids throwing curveballs? Yeah, so so we have, uh, you know, our youngest players are typically 10 years old. And, you know, I coached that team last year. It was an 11U team, but we had some 10-year-olds on it. Um, and when some of our guys throw curveballs and some of them don't. And so, um, I'm sorry about that. I just, um, so I don't tell our kids that they can't throw a curveball um, unless they don't, I feel like they don't throw it right. Uh, and then typically I'll work with them on it. Or, um, you know, maybe we'll get rid of that pitch. But I don't know if there's an exact age. I think the, the, the idea is to just throw the pitch properly. And, um, you know, I also make sure that we're, like, the number one thing is being able to throw a fastball and being able to throw a first strike. Um, being able to command it. And... You know, if I see a kid that's just constantly throwing breaking ball after breaking ball after breaking ball after breaking ball after breaking ball, I'm probably going to tell them to start throwing more fastballs and less breaking balls. Uh, can we play the show against each other? I actually haven't played the show in, in a long time. I got to get back to playing. I actually was thinking about playing tonight and playing live, but I decided to do this instead because a lot of people have been asking me. Um, to answer questions and stuff like that. So, um, by the way, we just broke a hundred people in here. So thank you everyone. If everyone could give the video a, a like, that would be great. Try to get a hundred likes. What tips do you have for a well-built, but undersized high school sophomore to make it to the next level D1 ball? Um, I don't know if I'd have any special advice just for him because he's undersized, but, um, you know, I would say the smaller you are, I mean, definitely colleges, especially Division One colleges are looking when they're recruiting, they are recruiting, you know, body types and they're looking for big, strong players, big, strong, fast players, like pretty much in every sport. Um, so I would say, you know, the smaller you are, um, the more that a couple things. One, if you're if you're small as in like short, then you've got to make sure that you're strong and hopefully fast too. You said he's well built. So, you know, he's short, but he's strong. I'd work on his speed, make sure he can run. The more tools you have, the better. But then, you know, the less physical you are, you've got to really be able to play the game. So, you know, if a player, let's say is 6'4", 220, who can really run, but he's a little bit raw, it's not as big of a deal because they'll say, well, we can work on him 
you know, we can work on refining his tools, but he's got the tools. If you're not as physical, you can't be as raw because they're going to look at it and say, well, he's not that big and he's raw, not a good combination. So um, my advice would be to be as skilled as possible to make up for maybe a lack of height or, you know, for some plays it might be a lack of, um, you know, maybe it's a lack of speed for some players. Maybe it's a lack of strength for some players. But you can really work on all that. Unfortunately, you can't really, you know, stretch yourself out if you're short. But you can still be as strong as possible and as fast as possible. Uh, players are are um, are getting really big. They want over six feet at shortstop. Yeah, I mean, I I do think. You know, listen, if I'm recruiting players, like I want big players also. Like I'm not looking for five foot five players. Doesn't mean you can't play for five foot five. Like I said, like I've played against small guys. You see Jose Altuve. I've played against Dustin Pedroia. There's not a ton of them. It's a reason. Um, but um, you know, it does it doesn't mean the good thing about baseball is you can be not the most physical um, physically imposing player and still play at a really high level, which is good. I mean, you know, in football, typically you have to be a certain height, weight, speed in baseball. You don't always have to be that there's, so I guess that's a good thing about it. What do college coaches consider small height and weight? That really depends on position, I think, but yeah, you know, I, I would say just in general, again, like you know, your catcher probably doesn't have to be as tall. Your first baseman's usually a little bit taller. Your corner guys are going to be bigger and taller. You know, your second baseman might be a little bit smaller. But like someone said, I mean, if you look at like a pretty high-level program, they're usually going to be pretty big kids. But it doesn't mean that you can't, again, play if you're smaller. So, you know, what's considered small? I don't know. Under 5'9", maybe? But again, don't take that like you can't play if you're under 5'9". Who do I think wins the World Series this year? Well, my preseason picks were, I don't know if they were the favorites. The Dodgers were definitely the favorite, and I went with the Dodgers. I just thought that they're super, super, super talented. I mean, everyone can see that, especially how good their offense is. Um, I had the Dodgers against the Yankees. I had the Dodgers winning it. I picked the same thing last year. Dodgers, Yankees, Dodgers winning it. So I guess I'll stick with the Dodgers winning it. Um, you know, Walker Bueller getting hurt doesn't help, but. How does one get into the majors coming from different leagues around the world? Well, uh, there are major league scouts all around the world. So, um, you know, there's a lot of people in uh, with the job of finding the best players all around the world. So, um, the, the main goal is to play as well as you possibly can. And... Uh, you know, again, it depends where you are from, I guess. But usually if you're really, really good, people will find you. Uh, what is something you don't miss from being in the majors? Uh, probably the thing I don't miss the most. I mean, there's a lot of things to miss about the major leagues. Uh, probably the thing you don't miss the most or I don't miss the most was probably um, the feel, the, the the pressure of trying to do well. You know, like uh, when I got called up, and for you that have seen my videos, I've made a lot of videos on it, but I was, I was going through a lot of changes. They were working with me on my swing and making a lot of adjustments. I didn't feel very comfortable and I was struggling trying to make those adjustments at the major league level. And, you know, you're trying to do well. And when you struggle, 
and you put pressure on yourself. There's a lot of pressure to, to do well, right? Like if you don't do well, then you don't play and you might never play again. So that's probably the biggest thing is like, there is a lot of pressure to do well and to perform. Try um, Hey man, I'm 17, tried out for my local Juco baseball team, didn't make it any advice. Um, well, you're, you're only 17. You're really young. You're, you say you're 17 and tried out for Juco. Yeah, you're wicked young. I mean, the biggest thing is, well, you can do two things. One, you can dedicate the next year to trying to improve your game as much as possible on your own, or you can obviously leave and go to a different school. Um, but I would start off with trying to figure out what it is about your game that needs improvement and work on it as much as you can. And then whether you try it again for the same school or go to a different school, I mean, the key is to try to just continue to get better. Did I worry about my numbers a lot? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think, uh, you know, I think every player thinks about their numbers and wants to do as well as possible. As much as you talk about, you know, we try to stress a lot and I stress a lot with our high school players. I talk a lot about, you know, not worrying about your numbers, you know, your batting average as a hitter, but to worry about, you know, your quality at bats and the quality of your at bats. It still makes it very hard. I would say almost every player knows where their numbers are and thinks about them. So, um, Every player wants to do well. So, you know, I try to reprogram the players into, I honestly don't really look at batting average, you know, which is like the most popular staff for high school players, probably that people talk about batting average. You know, I really don't look at it when it comes to our high school players. I know what they, I mean, I see the stats because people show me them and I, I get the stats um, and I have to turn the stats into the newspaper and, and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm really focused on, again, the quality of the at-bats you know, the pitches we're swinging at, are we hitting the ball hard? Not so much the end result. Easier said than done for people to think about that and not the their batting average. But uh, I've played against the Red Sox in spring training games, never in a big league game. I've played against them in big league spring training. Like, um, I actually made... Um, I'm trying to think what year it would have been. When I was with the Orioles, played the Red Sox. And, you know, back when, you know, they led the game. I think it was like Ellsbury led off, then Pedroia, then Ortiz. Um, so, like, that was the team that I that I played against. Would I have been more successful in the 20s to 60s since baseball was a little different back then? Well... I mean, if I was as skilled in the in the two thousands as, as if you just could take me and put me back then, well, then yeah, I'd probably be one of the best players in the league. Because um, I don't want to say I would be one of the best players in the league, but uh, the game was definitely different then. Players obviously get bigger, stronger, and faster every year. But those players for those times, you know, back then you're not going to have the training facilities that you had now, and the nutrition and or any of that stuff. So. What's a good 60 time for a D1 ball player? Depends on your position, but, um, you know, under seven seconds, 60 usually means that you're like an okay runner. Um, you know, under, I'd say a six, eight means you're a pretty darn good runner. Or you're, you know, you're a pretty good runner. You know, you run a six, six or below, then you're moving pretty, then, then you're moving. Video game Matt will be back. Big Dom's died. Yes. Any new things coming to Fenwick Baseball? Uh, it's a secret. But the, yes, there's always new things coming to, to Fenwick Baseball. We'll have all. We'll have you know, a lot of new players. And. Uh, My goal is always to to 
you know, we want to obviously be a lot better this year than we were last year. And we'll, you know, I'll say that every year. So there'll be a lot of new things that we bring. What's the best thing for a freshman to show varsity coaches or most important thing? You know, I don't know if there's a most important thing. Listen, I think when coaches are putting teams together, they're looking to put a team together that's going to help them win games. Um, obviously, like character and those type of things have a little bit to do with it as well. But in the end, it's, you know, every every coach is going to look for a little bit something different depending on their team and what, what they like. Um, so it's just what they value. So it's really tough to say, you know, what your coach values, but everybody values good players that help their team win. Um, some players that might be to be, you know, defensively, they're better offensively. Some players, it might be their offensive game. Some players, you know, pitchers might be, they throw strikes or they throw, you know, I don't know. There's, it, it's, it's a tough question to answer, but you got to have ability and you have to, the coach needs to feel that you give him a chance to, to win a game. So I always tell our players, like when we put our lineup together, I'm putting the nine players in a lineup that I feel give us the best chance to win the game on that particular day. Um, so, I mean, I think that's what most coaches look for. Now I might look for something a little bit different than, you know, another coach might look for. One coach might look for guys that can run and play small ball and, one coach might look for more bigger guys that hit for power. And, you know, so that could depend on your coach and their style and their preferences. But everyone's looking for good players. Uh, 5'9", 140 have offers? Of course you can if you're super highly skilled. But I would say that's an undersized player, yeah. For college baseball, it's 140 pounds is um, – is, is undersized. So I would definitely work on trying to get bigger and stronger. All right. We're almost at a hundred likes. Can we get a hundred likes if everyone could like the video? We got 110 people in here. So I think if everyone clicks the like button, we're going to get over a hundred. There we go. 97. Just need a couple more. 98. Almost there. Hey, there we go. Thank you, everyone. Well, now we're flying. 106. Yeah, I can do franchise and it won't be the show. Do players ever sit in first class on flights for road games? So, um, thanks, Pat. Uh, our, you know, like, depending on your team, like, our whole plane was first class. You know, it, we, we, it's not like a normal plane where you have first class and then, you know, you have... Uh, you know, your normal seats, like our, our plane was basically, um, with the Padres again, I, I, I haven't flown with other teams, but with the Padres, um, you have most of the seats are going to be two seats on each side. And they're like, basically like big first class seats, even like nicer than first class seats. And then towards the front of the plane, we would have, um, almost like uh, like almost like booths where there'd be a big table and then um, seats on each side of the table, like where you could play cards and stuff like that. So you'd have that more towards the front and then towards the back, you'd have your two seats on each side. So that's how our plane was. But, you know, I'm not sure how everyone's plane is. Uh, the glove in the rundown video, that was Henry's actually, who's in this chat right now. At what age can you tell that they have talent? Eight, 10, 15. Um, well, I can tell a player has talent at any age. You know, I see so many players of every age that I can tell pretty quickly within probably two minutes who has, a. Uh, a lot of talent for their age. That doesn't always mean that player's always gonna have that talent. I've seen players, um, 
that are awesome at 10 that aren't that great at 16. I've seen players at 10 that I think are not very good and they're awesome at 16. So it just depends. Just because you're talented at six or 10 or 12 or 14 doesn't always mean you're gonna be talented in the future. Um, I have seen some players that are amazing at eight and amazing at 12 and amazing at 16. <laughs> so, you know, it just depends. But, you know, all I do and all I've done for the last almost 10 years is watch youth players play baseball. Pretty much it. So I've seen thousands and thousands and thousands of players. So, I, you know, I can tell pretty quickly who I think has talent. Um, you know, talent doesn't always equal a success either. Like there's some super talented players that don't play well in games. So, um, but hopefully that makes sense. You know, a lot of times play, people say like when it comes to a tryout or watching a player, like, you know, how can you tell if a player is good or not just watching them, you know, for an, a small amount of time. Again, you can't always tell exactly who's going to be great in the game. A game is, is a different animal. Like, I've seen great practice players that don't play well in the game. But I can tell who has talent, like, pretty quickly. Oh, let's see. Tips for a player that started at 14. So any player that starts late, later than other players just has to, you know, you just have to do more work because you have more time to wake up to, you know, like baseball is an acquired skill. So like you have less, you have not acquired that skill yet. So you need to put in more work to acquire it quicker because you need to catch up. That's the biggest tip. If I could play for any team, who would it be? Um, to be honest, I would probably want to play. Uh, all right, good night, Henry. Um, have fun at school tomorrow. If I could play for any team, I would probably play for a, a warmer climate team. I'd probably play for the Dodgers. Um, you know, solid team, trying to win, going to have a good chance to win, you know, um, Playing in Southern California, beautiful weather. Like, that would probably be my team. I do not like playing in the cold. Like, playing for the Yankees, the Red Sox would be awesome. But I would hate playing in April. Like, I just do not like playing in the cold. I've never played well in the cold. Um, I don't like the cold. <laughs> What's the worst thing you said to an umpire? Um... The worst thing I said to an umpire, as a coach or a player, uh, as a player, I didn't say a whole lot. I never really yelled at umpires. I would just, you know, nothing mean, nothing mean at all. You know, I'd see a pitch, if the ball, if I'm getting a pitch that's in and they call a strike, I would just say, that's a, that's a ball. It's not a strike. Like, that's as mean as I would get. Um, and even now, like, I don't yell at umpires. I don't, if I disagree with the call, I'll just tell the umpire that I disagree with the call. Um, but I, I don't ever, I'd say I'm pretty good at controlling my emotions. Um, and usually even when I'm really mad, people can't tell. I can be really mad inside. And uh, people are like, oh, you didn't seem that mad. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm furious. <laughs> but um, it doesn't always come out like that. Uh, did I ever have anxiety before a game or did I get used to it? Yeah, so um, I've never had, I've always, I, I get nervous before every game, I would say. Pretty much, you know, not like a nervous where like, it controls me as far as like, I can't play the game, but like you get like a nervous feeling before every game. And again, and in big games, you get more nervous. Yeah. I think that's pretty normal. I would think most players get nervous. Um,
college showcase invites. Um, yeah, it really depends. It's a tough question because there's so many of them. You know, the biggest thing is a lot of the things that are like invite only now are not really like invite only. Now I say that there are some things that are invite only, but like I see things a lot that are like invite only and then every player on our team gets invited or invite only and I get an invite and I'm like, you know, fellas, I'm 37. Like I, I have no eligibility left. You cannot, I cannot attend your event, but I appreciate the invite. That's like that's serious. I get invites all the time. So, you know, just do your research. Um, there's too many showcases to go over them all now. But find out, you know, what college coaches are attending. You know, that even sometimes is tough because it'll say college coaches that have attended in the past and they'll put like 400 coaches. But, you know, what does that tell me? So I would try to find out who are the college coaches that are in attendance? Who are they? And what coaches are they? Are they coaches that can make decisions? You know, like sometimes you go to events and all that are there are like basically like the volunteer assistant who who really I'm not saying volunteer assistants don't can't make decisions. That's not true. Um, but they're going to need someone else. You know, like a volunteer assistant isn't going to be able to watch you and offer you a volunteer assistant might watch you and then call up his recruiting coordinator and say, hey, or his head coach say, hey, I got this guy here and I really like him. We got to get eyes on him. Um, but I think it's a lot easier if you're at some place where the call, where the recruiting coordinator is actually there. And so when they see you, they don't have to call anyone. They can say, I like this guy. I mean, they'll call their head coach, but a lot of times, you know, the, the recruiting coordinator has the power to pull the trigger, um, on a player. So. Not to take any time away from travel, but do you think some guys could go from high school to college and pro ball without getting burned out? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't... I mean, burnout's an interesting thing. Like, I, I played travel ball, but I also played three sports. So, I mean, I never, ever felt burnt out. Um You know, I played when I became a professional. When I played in college, I played baseball 12 months out of the year, and I never felt burnt out. So um, I don't know. Burnout's an interesting thing. Sometimes it's good to get away from the sport. Um, if you feel like you need to get away, then get away, you know. But, you know, like for Massachusetts, like for us, like, High school ball is April and May. Travel ball is usually June, July, a little bit of August. And that's it. Now, you can play fall ball if you want. You can, you know, we have winter workouts, but, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting away from baseball or any sport and playing other sports. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with playing a lot of baseball. So I tell people, do what you want to do. If all you ever want in life is baseball, that's all you love, and that's what you want to do, then do it. Um, you know. And if it's not, then don't. Uh, coaching my first 14, you travel team, Matt. Best advice. So I would just say, um, you know, when I, tr when I coach our teams, I just, uh, I, I try to make sure it's about the players and not about me. Um, I try to develop the players as much as I can. Um, I try to coach them as much as I can. I'm into the game. Um, you know, I want the kids to have fun, but I also want them to learn. I want them to to know, like, the the right way to play the game. Again, I guess that's the way I feel is the right way to play the game. But, uh, you know, but, but at 14U, like, yeah, I'm just trying. I, I want to teach them the game. I want to get them better, develop them. 
I want to make sure they enjoy it and continue to play. So those are kind of my goals, I guess. Mass hockey player. Uh, was I a skilled player or were you mucking it up? So uh, as a young player, I would say I was a pretty skilled player. Um, my skills diminished as I got older because I stopped playing as much hockey. By the time I was a senior, I was playing hockey for two to three months of the year, and that was it. Like, I just played during the – when the when the high school season ended, I didn't step on the ice until the high school season started the next year. My skills deteriorated pretty good. Um, going in the high school, I played hockey, like, all the time. I played, you know – I don't want to say year round, but I played a lot of hockey and my skills were pretty high. So do I think there's still potential for you, even though I didn't make your, your Juco team or you didn't make your Juco team? Yeah. I mean, it just depends on the Juco team. I mean, if I, I'd have to see you play, if I saw your Juco team and it's a bunch of kids that don't know how to play baseball, then I was, and, and you didn't make the team, I'd say, well, you know, maybe you don't want to play baseball anymore, but there's some Juco teams that are absolutely loaded, so. I've never broken a bat over my knee. Nope. Yep, fundamentals, absolutely. I agree, teaching fundamentals is huge. I mean, everything for me is about fundamentals, like, so, like, people will stress uh, – so that's a good point, I guess, uh, talking about fundamentals. Um, I mean, I think most – I don't want to say most coaching, I guess, but, like, um, you know, fundamentals – sometimes people think, like, oh, I teach the fundamentals to little kids. Like, I see 18-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 20-year-olds, like, that, that – that don't feel the ground ball properly. Like to me, that's fundamental. So I'm like always coaching that. Um, why are there a lot of dumb coaches in baseball? Where could I know? Where could I know if a coach is good? <laughs> Uh, why are there a lot of dumb coaches in baseball? Well, I'll say this. Like, there's no test that you'd have to pass to become a baseball coach. Anyone can become a baseball coach, right? So um, at the same time, I think a lot of people – listen, a lot of people think coaches are dumb. A lot more people think coaches are dumb than smart. You know, a lot of people watching the game think they know more than the people playing it or the people coaching it. A lot of people that watch Major League Baseball think that they know better than the manager of the big league team. Uh, so, like, it's unfair to say there are dumb coaches. I mean, there are, listen, there's there's a lot of coaches that don't know a ton about baseball, and there's some coaches that know a ton about baseball. Um, I think most people, if you were around, like, a Major League manager or Major League Baseball people um, – would be surprised at how much goes into the game. So I didn't really answer your question, but at the same time, I mean, I see people, I, I coach against people or see people or, you know, and I'm like, wow, like they don't know very much about baseball. <laughs> I also see a lot of people that I'm like, wow, they know a lot about baseball. Best item on the Taco Bell menu. Uh, I actually hate Taco Bell. So I don't like tacos. So when I was with the Padres, we always had Taco Tuesday. And I was not eating tacos on Tuesdays. Uh, do I have goals of climbing the coaching ranks? Um, you know, climbing the coaching ranks is, is interesting. People think like, you know, professional coaching is higher on the coaching rank than college and that college is higher than high school and that high school is higher than 
you know, middle school or travel ball or whatever. Like I was offered a managing job, a minor league managing job the second I stopped playing and I didn't take it. Um, so like, and when I say that people are like, what? You didn't take a professional coaching job? What are you, an idiot? It's like, you know, so I don't look at it like climbing the ranks. Like I'm a travel ball high school coach and I'm trying to climb to the major leagues at the pro ball. Like I had an opportunity to do pro ball 10 years ago. I said no um, for a bunch of reasons. So, you know, so to answer your question, no, I, I, I'm not coaching to climb the ranks um, yeah. Is it worth it to reclass? Yeah, we could talk a lot about reclassing. It really depends on the player, I think. Like, some players could benefit from an extra year physically, mentally, you know, um, emotionally. Some players, probably not worth it. It really, I think it's a, a case by case basis. So, wow, I've been on here for an hour already. Uh, hey, there's Mar15 with his, his fart questions. Can I come over to your house and fart? No, you can't, Mar. Sorry about it. For travel ball, we are noticing a big difference from 14U to 16U from coaching travel ball. What's the biggest difference you notice in level of play? Uh, level of play, 14U to 16U, as far as like the players are concerned. Well, I mean, you know, 16U player is going to be much more, typically, physically, they're going to be much more developed than a 14U player. So, you know, you're looking at a kid that's, you know, maybe about to go into high school versus a, a kid that's going to be like a, um, you know, a, a junior in high school. Um, or going to be a junior in high school. So that's a, that's a big, the two years and especially in that age, uh, it can be huge. So the, the speed of the game is just different. You have more physical kids, bigger, stronger, faster. They throw harder. They, you know, they hit it harder. So best fast food burger besides in and out, uh, probably five guys. What do I think of Tennessee baseball and Tony Vitello? Um, or Vitello, however you want to say it. Um, so I think I watched Tennessee play a few times this year. Uh, I am not an expert in their program at all. Uh, he has obviously done an amazing job bringing Tennessee to, you know, become one of the best teams in the country. I know that, uh, some people think that they, um, you know, talk a lot of smack and do a lot of crazy things. And some people don't like that. Some people do like it. I didn't watch enough of them to tell you whether I like it or not like it. I mean, I've seen some things on like highlights and stuff. I think that what he's done at is he's done a good job of creating a, I don't know if brand is the right word, but yeah, I guess brand. He's created something that Tennessee is known for, and a lot of people are paying attention to Tennessee baseball. A lot of good players want to go play at Tennessee baseball. Um, they're attracting a certain type of player. And so I think those are all good things. Now, you might not like how they go about doing some things, but I do not think it's easy. I think you have to be very smart and very very talented to take a program and become the best team in the country i mean they're ranked, ranked number one for a long time it doesn't happen by accident so i think he knows what he's doing i think he's really smart that's very true can't have i can't have a, an internet stream without a mar 15 awkward question did your wrist ever fully heal? No, my wrist will never heal. It's, um, it's, uh, I have an arthritic wrist. So I was told that a long time ago when I was playing. When I got my first surgery, I was told that my wrist won't heal. I was told I was going to have to get surgery basically every year for the rest of my career, which I did. Um, you know, I've shown it before. You can see that it goes from there to here, and then it goes up the side of my hand. So I've had three surgeries on that wrist, and... Um, 
you know, I think I was supposed to get a fourth and never did because I stopped playing. So, yeah, my wrist hurts when I play golf. A lot of people say, like, oh, why don't you golf more? When I go golfing, my wrist hurts. I mean, I went I went and hit golf balls, like, last week. And I, th I remember after my third shot, I was golfing with my kids and with Lara. And, uh, like, after my third shot, I remember I got, like, a bad pain in my wrist. And, you know, I said to Lara, like, oh, like, that, like, really hurt right there. So my wrist hurts a lot. Hey, thanks for buying the, uh, so I bought your hitting clinic uh, or hitting course online. I'm Jack to Learn. I coach 14, 15, Babe Ruth. So much opportunity to be more fundamentally sound. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I think the thing with the course, and one thing that took me a long time is to have a, have a, a plan and, you know, be able to fully explain to someone what I feel like is a fundamental swing um and then be able to teach them and then have drills for it like it took a long time to do that you know not that i don't want to say i was working on building that course for 10 years but like i was trying to gain as much knowledge as i could for all those years i was coaching and then finally last year i was able to package it in a way and be able to explain it in a way where you know i can take a player and say okay this is these are the four core, we'll call them core principles of the swing. And, you know, this is what we're trying to do with our swing. We call them three absolutes. And, you know, these are the drills to do to work on these. So I appreciate it. I, I hope it helps you out. I've watched your videos as they go to and appreciate the effort you put in. Well, thank you. I appreciate you watching them. What does a normal 8U practice night look like? It feels difficult to take up 90 minutes with these guys without boring them or wearing them out. Yeah, so if you got an 8U team, uh, you're going to need a lot of help. The more coaches, the better. I would keep uh, the group small. I'd keep the reps high. They want to do stuff. Um, I would try to create games to keep them. You know, they like games. They like challenges. They like competing. So I would do as much of that as possible. Uh, as little standing around as possible. Um, my biggest pet peeve, anyone that's coached with me knows this. Um, I hate long lines. I hate standing around. I hate, um, just like idle, you know, stuff. So, uh, I always start to tweak out a little bit. You know, if you're ever at one of our practices, you know, I say it all the time. I'll grab a coach and be like, you got to go and split that group up. Like it's got too many guys. Um, and I always usually joke around. I'll say, like, oh, I'm getting anxiety or, like, I'm starting to shake. I, I can't watch that line. I'm kind of kidding, but I'm kind of not. Like, if I see a long line, I, I, I don't like it. So, like, for me, a line that's more than, like, three players long, four players long is too long. I, I see some teams practice, and it's, like, a line of, like, 12 kids. I, can't, I, I could not do it. I would lose my mind. <laughs> Should 12 U infielders have all the skills and know-how of a high school player? Uh, no, absolutely not. They're not a high school player, so. I mean, it'd be great if they did, but players should be learning more every year. So it's hard. It's, it's almost impossible for a 12-year-old to know as much as a high school player. Now, have I seen a 12-year-old that knows as much as a high school player? I mean, I don't know. I guess maybe I've seen a kid or two, but in general, no. <laughs> Sorry about that slumber. I just hate tacos. How do you get noticed in Canada? Well, I don't know because, um, I mean, I've been to Canada, but for hockey, not for baseball. So I don't know exactly how it works, but an easy way to get noticed is videotape. Film everything you do. Uh, if you're a pitcher, it's easy. You get a radar gun and it's simple. If you're a hitter, you know, it's not as easy, but film everything you do and and send it to college coaches. Uh, is, is low in the zone harder to hit or is high in the zone harder to hit? Um, depends on the hitter. You know, like Mike Trout, like his swing is built more for the low pitch than the high pitch. Um, 
you know, typically hitters that have, you know, if you were here at the beginning of the talk, when we were talking about vertical bat angle, like typically everyone has like, so the, everyone has a swing, right? And you can get, you can work on getting a better swing some, or sometimes your swing gets worse, but everyone has a swing, right? A certain way that their body moves and the bat moves. Um, and so like Mike Trout has, you know, a lot of like his, his vertical bat angle is going to be more vertical than horizontal. And that creates an easier, you're going to hit the lower ball better with that. Um, whereas some players are going to be more of a horizontal hitter, right? Like, um, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, like, uh, like Manny Machado is more horizontal than verse vertical. So like, typically that is going to determine which ball you hit better. Um, I would say most hitters hit high versus low better or hit low versus high better or hit in versus out better or hit, or hit out versus in better, right? Like very few hitters hit every ball the same. So, um, you know, which one is better or which one's easier? I forget the question now. Just depends on the hitter. Thank you. I appreciate that. Have I ever been to Canada? Yeah, I've been to Canada a bunch of times. I've played, I actually have played baseball in Canada when I was 12, I think. But I've been there mostly for hockey, Toronto, Montreal. Um, where else have I been? Um, uh, I've been to a bunch of places in Canada. Any drills you recommend for t-ball kids to not be afraid of catching the ball? I actually have a video on teaching my son, who at the time was probably like five or six maybe. Um, so I would check that out, go to, um, type in on YouTube, like youth coach or like, um, youth catching drills or something like that. I forget the title of it, but I made a whole video on it. Cause I get that question a lot and my son's seven now, but at the time we filmed the video, I think he was like six. Was he sick? Yeah. He had to have been probably six. What's the longest game I played? I think it was against Florida State in college. I forget how many innings we went, but we went a lot of innings. I think we went like, I don't know, I felt like we almost played two games in one. Yeah. Sorry, Lars calling me. Yeah. Oh, Lars, sorry, Lars answering the question for us. Apparently she's on this stream, I didn't know. She said, when I was with the Padres, we played the Nationals in a 14-inning game, which I do remember now. But I played a longer game in, in college. But, uh, yeah, we, we played the Nationals in a long game. Laura remembers that game because she was there and probably hating every minute of it. Uh, no, I would not be able to get a hit off the Grom. Big leaguers can't get hits off the ground now. <laughs> uh, Justin, is uh, Dustin Pedroia small in person? Yes, he is. Uh, I don't really have a favorite team. I cheer for everyone. All right, everyone. So I'm going to give another like maybe two, three minutes and then I'm going to bed because tomorrow I have a super busy day. I have a lot of work to do. I'm trying to get into the facility again. Um, I'm actually on the YouTube, uh, MLB YouTube game of the week. I'll be, um, highlighted on there. You, everyone should go watch. I'm going to be, um, I think it's called the creator spotlight. I did it last year. I'm doing it again tomorrow. So you'll see me on, um, the YouTube game. I'll be answering questions and, um, well, I won't tell you what we'll be talking about, but everyone should check it out. I'll make sure that I film it as well. And, and put it on here for everyone to see. But we're gonna talk about uh, my uh, my when Vin Scully called me embarrassing. An embarrassing play. We're gonna talk about that. Uh, how nor how far do you normally need to travel for travel ball and baseball? <laughs> um, 
really depends. I mean, every team's different. We take our older team down to Georgia, which is a decent travel for us. We're going to Florida next month. So uh, really depends. Some teams travel a ton. Some don't travel as much. Hey, thanks for the good luck fart, Mar. The most strange or unique team name that I played for. Oh, I don't know. I don't think I... I'm trying to think of unique names I played for. Uh, I mean, if you go with the Padres, I played for the Emeralds, the Storm, the Missions, the Beavers. Uh, then I played for... Uh, after that, I went to the Nationals. I played for the Senators for a little bit. Um, I played for the Chiefs. I played for the Tides. I played for the... Um, who else did I play for? I mean, I played for a lot of teams. I played for the Padres, Nationals, Orioles, Indians, Yankees. How was my time in the Cleveland organization? You know, I really liked my time there. I wasn't there very long. Um, you know, I, I got, I got, I didn't play much with the Indians. I actually thought I hit well. I mean, I did hit well. I hit really well in spring training. I didn't hit for much power, but I hit a lot of line drives and got a lot of hits. I hit the ball hard, like a lot. And, uh, but I didn't play great defensively at shortstop. That was my biggest problem. For some reason, at the end of my career, everyone wanted to move me to a utility infield, and they made me play shortstop. And I just think at shortstop when I got older. And, uh, you know, I think if I had just stayed at second, I think if people had just left me at second, just said, go play second base, and I think I would have been better off than trying to be a utility infielder. I was never good as a utility infielder, unfortunately. Some people can do it. I couldn't do it. Best pitches for over the top arm slot. I mean, I I guess it depends. Like some players throw a good breaking ball from there. Some players can throw. I mean, I, it just depends. I guess I'd have to see it. I used a Louisville Slugger C two seventy one thirty four inch thirty one ounce uh, M nine. How do I find a good hitting coach like you in my area? Uh, I would talk to other players. I would search online. Um, you know, Instagram has a lot of good hitting information. YouTube does. So I would just do research. But I would talk to a lot of players and just ask them who they work with. You know, find out who the good players are in your area and see who they're working with. All right, let's go one more question. And then I'm going to go to bed. That's super cool. So you met Terry Francona. I did. First time I met Terry Francona was actually, uh, I, was, I was actually in the hole. I was about to go in the on-deck circle. We were in spring training. Uh, my first game with the big league team in spring training. And like I'm getting ready, I got I'm putting my helmet on and getting my bat, and he says, uh, he says, uh, hey, he's like, so you're a uh, you're a Peabody guy, huh? And I was like, yeah, yes, sir. He was like, oh, cool. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go hit now. And that was my first time talking to Terry Francona. So, um, but he was a uh, really good guy, always kind of up, always upbeat. A lot of energy, uh, seemed like a like a player's manager, like someone you'd want to play for, play hard for. So I wasn't there very long with the Indians. I wasn't around him a ton. Uh, but the time that I was around him, I thought that he was, uh, you know, and, I, and obviously I was a, a huge Red Sox fan growing up. So, you know, I, I, I watched him manage you know, every night when I was watching games, so. 
What do you do with kids that will not listen? I threaten them. <laughs> I, uh, uh, that's a good question. It really depends on why they don't listen, how old they are. Um, really depends. I've yelled at some players. I've tried to be nice to some players. I'll do whatever has to be done to get them to listen. I'll try different things. I'll try to be nice. If that doesn't work, I'll try to be mean. If that doesn't work, I'll try to, you know, I'll scream at someone. I'll talk to them nice and gentle. I'll, you know, whatever. If you play for us and if you play for me in high school, you've probably seen me scream at some people. And that's usually because I tried to talk nice and it didn't work. So I went to option B. Um, no, the one good, the, the one good thing, I don't know if this is a good trade or not. Like, like I said, usually I can, I can control my emotions pretty good. So, um, you know, I try, I just try different stuff. Sometimes people be like, wow, you like, you got really mad there and I'll actually not be that mad, but I'll just try that on the player to see if it works because being nice didn't work. Um, but again, usually for me, like when I am really mad, um, some people don't even realize it a lot of the time, but sometimes I just have to act, you know, if I'm like, man, I've been so nice to this guy and it's not getting through to him. Maybe I got to get really pissed off and lay into him. Then I just, even if I'm not super pissed off, I just have to pretend I am to see if that works. Okay, last question. What do you think is the most difficult part of baseball? The most difficult part of baseball is that it almost should not be humanly possible to hit a small baseball that's round with a round bat being thrown at you 100 miles an hour, moving all over the place. And then not only do you have to hit it, but then they have eight guys playing in front of you that are going to try to catch the ball when you hit it. So that all of that together should almost not be possible. Um, yet somehow it is, but that's why the game is so hard. And uh, that's why for the average person that watches on TV and says like, Oh, how do you miss that or whatever? You know, like the game, the game actually looks really easy and it looks really slow on TV, you know, but if 99.999% of people went and stood in the batter's box and saw what 98 miles an hour looked like, you know, as uh, Ace Ventura said, I'm looking for Ray Finkel and a clean pair of shorts. That's what you'd be saying too. I'll end it with that. That's all I got. I hope everyone has a good night. I'm going to sleep. And Laura and I do not sleep in separate beds. She's actually working right now. And uh, I'm going to go to sleep. And I'm, I go to bed early. She goes to bed late. So that's all I got. We'll see you guys later. And gals, have a good night. And thanks for hanging out, everyone.